monk beds in there. We can just sit a little closer. <laughs> this is gonna be bad. <laughs> I knew this was good. <laughs> you know dyslexic anyway, so. I do know you're dyslexic okay. anyway. And you can hear our kids in the background. Yeah. Which is fine. Way. That's normal life. It's normal okay. life. Alright, let's take me. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Vicki with Naturally Minded Sisters, and today I have another guest interviewee, and her name is Lauren. I've known her for 31 years, right? Yep. And Lauren has had a sort of health journey um, dealing with Hashimoto's, and she has had two, two um, births in her birth and one home birth, so she's just going to give us a rundown of a bunch of stuff and um, sort of hopefully help you guys if you're on these kinds of journeys with um, sort of just... You know, sit back, listen, and you can hear some, maybe get some tips, helpful tips, um, and here's some, I think we'll try to get through everything, if we can, really quickly, sort of yeah. Hashimoto's journey, and all three births. So, first up, Lauren. Hello. Thank Hello. you for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> she has no choice, she's my best friend. Um, but, so let's just start with, like, your, how you sort of figured out you had Hashimoto's, like, what were the symptoms beforehand, and mm -hmm. then, like, what you did to figure out that was the diagnosis, and then how did you treat that, I guess? So I, after I had my second born, I had massive fatigue, more than just, I'm not sleeping through the night because I have a baby. Yeah. So I had gone to my primary care physician and said, I'm having these symptoms of just extreme exhaustion, just not even, even wanting to get off the couch. And I said, I'd like you to check my thyroid because low thyroid runs in my, runs in my family. I was like, maybe that's something going on with me. And he said, no, you're just a young, tired mom. I was like, okay. <laughs> Doctors can be dismissive sometimes. <laughs> yeah, right. And I didn't know any better. And yeah. so I thought, okay, well, maybe that's what it is. And so I went about another year of being extremely exhausted, um, like super dark circles under my eyes, hair very thin. And I was like, my postpartum hair loss, it feels like it's like lasting forever. It just didn't stop after, you know, it's really supposed to. And so. I had one day, one bad day, where I was like, I just need to be on the couch. I cannot even get up. I have no energy at all. And that was really the kicker for me, where I'm like, this isn't normal. This this isn't normal, where I can't even have enough energy to get up and play with my kids and do yeah. daily tasks. So Because you'd already had one, so the postpartum tiredness yes. that comes with having a kid was yeah. different the second time around. It was different the second time around. And so at that point, my second born was over a year old. He was about 18 months old. And I was like, i got I got to figure this out. So I ended up going to a naturopath. Uh -huh. instead of going back to my primary care doctor and I said I asked for a full thyroid panel a year ago my doctor said no you're just a tired mom and she said well I do a full thyroid panel right off the bat that's standard for me um, and so she did a full thyroid panel and through all my blood work she I mean she did very extensive blood work <clears throat> and said you have Hashimoto's that's why you're feeling so fatigued okay, I had really low B12, low iron, all of that. Uh, so she started me on a Hashimoto's protocol, which was uh, like an elimination diet. I, you know, gluten, dairy, soy, sugar. Um, no fun. No fun, no <laughs> fun at all. Had you heard of Hashimoto's at this point before? I hadn't, no. Okay. But I knew that thyroid disease ran in my family, and so I wasn't surprised by it by any means. Oh, yeah. And so... Um, and it was, it was encouraging to hear that this is something that you can manage pretty well once you realize what your triggers are, you know, if it's sugar or gluten or alcohol or whatever it might be. Um, she said that usually takes the longest to figure out is what are your health triggers and if you can keep away from those things then you can manage it pretty well. So that's what I started doing. I, I did the whole <laughs> elimination diet. It was awful. I lost way too much weight. I was so hungry all the time. And at the time, I was still breastfeeding my second born. Oh, he just yeah. did not want to stop. Um, and so finally, I had to cut that off because I'm like, I can't, I'm going to waste away to nothing. <laughs> Rubble up. <laughs> and so um, I stopped nursing and I started to eat more food. I started reintroducing things. Kind of over time period. How long did you do that for? Oh gosh, several months. All right, maybe. I, I think the the Hashimoto's protocol diet is like a ninety day. If you follow it to a T, a ninety day okay. thing. Um, and then after that, you can you can reintroduce things and see how your body reacts. And so I started reintroducing things. Um, I worked closely with a dietitian, and over time, kind of realized what my triggers were. And so I was able to 
I mean, basically, almost completely reverse it, even while pregnant with my third. Mm. Um, so, so that was my journey with that. Just um, now, do you still find you have any sort of triggers, or do you feel like it's like gone? No, I still have triggers, and okay. it, it hits me hard as postpartum. So I would say after my firstborn, I didn't know I had Hashimoto's. I felt that. But he also didn't sleep for the first three months. Yeah, well, separate issue. <laughs> so like, okay, so I just don't sleep ever, so you yeah. know, that's why I'm tired. And then the second born, same thing, and then learned it was Hashimoto. So I was like, okay, I, I should. I, so now I was aware with my third born, probably here in the background. Yeah, we're at home. The kids yeah, are with their, they're, they're, yeah, yeah, with they're family. Like, yeah, <laughs> dad, grandparents, and uncles. Um, but so I was very aware of it. Um, having my third one. So I made sure that I was eating plenty of protein, especially in the mornings. Cause it's so easy. Like when you have little kids, you get up, you have your coffee and you're feeding them 10,000 snacks. And then you get to noon and you're like, I did not eat yet. <laughs> yeah. So making um, sure that I'm eating like as soon as I wake up, avoiding caffeine. If I, I if I have caffeine, it's usually like half caffeinated coffee or just decaf in general. Um, and then, avoiding alcohol for the most part like occasionally I'll have a drink or whatever if I'm on vacation we'll have a beer with dinner or a cocktail or whatever but at home I typically stay away from it and then uh stress stress is a big one yeah so how do you mitigate that how do you mitigate Hashimoto's knowing that you have it with getting pregnant with your third one then does that like change how you while you were pregnant what you did you said protein in the morning but is that like yeah did you change up anything else, like between the first and second pregnancies, knowing now third pregnancy yeah. I have Hashimoto's? Yeah, okay. so I did change up like my overall diet, which it wasn't terrible before knowing I had Hashimoto's, yeah. but I definitely had to clean it up a lot more. So I had a very clean diet for the most part. Um, you have cravings when you're pregnant, it's like whatever. <laughs> you have that occasionally, it's not a big deal, but I, <laughs> the 80-20 rule, right? Yeah, I you live by that around really here. <laughs> So I would do, you know, my like overall healthy diet. Um, I did everything. I did a lot of homeopathic remedies for things, whereas in the past I would have gone like more allopathic. So I was just a lot more gentle on my overall system, and felt great during my pregnancy. I felt really great. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I would get my. So the only thing that they did is they checked my thyroid every trimester. So oh, okay. they did that every they did that more often because of it. And at the end of my pregnancy, I, I mean, I think I was like three weeks before she was due, and they were like, You're like almost you've almost completely reversed your Hashimoto's. Like that's crazy. It's like, well, that's awesome. So I have not gotten blood work since I've had my third born. Okay. So that will be coming up soon to see how it's going. Cause postpartum it can get wonky with all the Hormones and breastfeeding and breastfeeding eating. Like hormones, sometimes you just yeah. have to eat, and it might not be the greatest food, but it's just like you have to eat something. So I'm curious to see what that's going to look like. But overall, just changing a diet, making sure I'm getting more sleep when I can. It's hard to with a baby. Hard so that, that's another, that's another trigger yeah. when you're not sleeping, yeah. you know. So I would say that was the difference between my second and my third, is I had known about it, and so I was able to make the adjustments during pregnancy to make sure it was a healthy one, and then I felt good. So you didn't, did you have as much fatigue after the third one as the second one? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, it's one of those things, you know, I think when you get, when you have something, when the, and I think this can be a, men, a mental thing too, like someone, the doctor will tell you, you have Hashimoto's, you have di you know, gestational diabetes or GBS mm -hmm. or anything that comes along with yeah. pregnancy. And then you think, oh, well, not a death sentence, but you say, oh, well, that's it. That's what I have. Right. And you don't people like well especially when you're pregnant you think you you can't do anything to help your body with any of those things and there are people like you with Hashimoto's mm -hmm. pregnant just fine like you said by the end you've reversed it and then you've got people that um GBS there's my sister has a protocol I had GBS I cured it like people are like oh GBS we'll just always have GBS but it can literally like the test I mean I know yeah there's a study I forget where and it's someone who like they tested GBS and then it was positive, and then like the next test, which was like 48 hours later, was negative. Yeah. So it's like these things that people think they take it sort of as like end all be all. That's just it. Mm -hmm. Period at the end of the sentence. But you can, you can take something that's yeah. you know a disease like that and say I can at least you know take uh, what's the word. Um, take the initiative. Take the initiative yeah. and, and sort of like do some research or do. The yeah. work, because some people don't want to do the work. Yeah, and I know sometimes it's responsibility. Hard. And you know? yeah, especially yeah. Well, it's 
Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of different things like that where I think people when they get pregnant especially they're just like, well, that's just what I have to deal with. Right. You know, like, it doesn't always have to be that way. Yeah. You know, there could be there could be ways to mitigate it or at least make it better while you're yeah. while you're in it. And just seeing the difference between your second and third postpartum. Yeah. I mean, way shows, shows way you different. personally, and yeah. anyone that knew her, you know, knew yeah. that she didn't have the same issues. So, mm -hmm. um, but so yeah, let's talk about uh, babies. Yeah, babies, birth stories. Everyone likes a good birth story oh, around here usually. Birth <laughs> so first one, we were actually pregnant. Uh, oh, at the same time. Same time for the first. Two. My for the, first two, your two. My only two, her first two, we yep. were pregnant at the same time. Was not planned. Was not planned. Um, they are, our oldest two are... Like four months apart. Four months apart, yeah. yeah. And then our youngest, or my middle, your youngest, are five or six weeks apart. Just a few weeks, yeah. yeah. I mean, really, I mean, it was yeah. like December and January. So yeah, yeah they were, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very close in age. So we were pregnant at the same time for the very first time. Yeah. So that was kind of fun. That was really Best fun. friends who were like, we met at, at age eight. Yeah. And all of a sudden here we are pregnant at the same time and, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, kind of managing that. But but what was interesting is I think, um, like, just the way your stories sort of progressed into, yes. they changed. Every pregnancy was, there was a change. And we're not just talking about her Hashimoto's, but other things. And so mm -hmm. let's just talk about, like, your first birth story. With your oldest, like what, what, do, what were your thoughts? Like you get pregnant, mm -hmm. what do you, what's next? Like what do you, you're like, well, yeah. <laughs> what do I do now? <laughs> like, like, the first thing is like, okay, well, where do you deliver? Like how are you gonna, like, because you have to immediately establish, establish care, and so there's hospital, birth center, home, you know, free birth. I'm not there. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> yeah, there yet. I'm not, okay, <laughs> I wasn't either. <laughs> but I spent, well, especially first time out, I didn't even know about it until later on, but. I did remember when trying to figure out, okay, well, what, what way, what route are we going to go? Years ago, I, we, we weren't, I wasn't even married yet. You were newly married and you made me watch the business of being oh, yeah, documentary. Yeah. Yes. Highly uh, recommend if you haven't very seen good, it. But I, I mean, I'll I find a link and put it in the comments. <laughs> I remember watching that and I was like, this is really interesting. This is really like good information and just something I tucked away into the Rolodex of memories of my mind. And it was like, when we got pregnant, I remember seeing that documentary with you. I was like, I should watch that again. And so originally, I went the traditional OBGYN through a hospital route. Went to my first appointment. It was ridiculous. <laughs> we were there maybe like 15 minutes, I think. And then they like did my blood work and we were out the door. And I was like, I don't even know if they gave me a minute to like think and ask questions, you know, especially when it's new and you don't really know. Back and forth. Yeah. Well, and you're like, you don't really know what to ask until you're really in the thick of it, and then you're, then you think about it later, and you're like, dang it, I should have asked that. I should have, like, like when you're new to it, you <laughs> yeah. don't know. Yeah. So it was very like, boom, boom, boom. You're a number. We're gonna, we're gonna herd you in and herd you out, and so that's how it felt. And so I did two or three appointments there, and by my third appointment, I I remember I had a question about my blood work. And it was a simple question. It wasn't like there's was anything concerning. I just had a simple question. And the doctor's like, uh, hold on, let me check. She, like, she leaves the room, comes back. She doesn't, she like opens the door, doesn't even poke her head in. I just see the door open and she goes, it's, it's X, Y, and Z. Have a good day. And then shuts the door. And I'm like, I don't even know what that means. Like, so there's no time to like follow up. There. I was like, this, I can't, I can't do this. This is too stressful for me. I, I just, I, I have more questions. I have things that I, I so as a first timer, as a first timer, yeah. especially, you know, if this is, if I had, you know, five kids or something, maybe it wouldn't be a big deal. But my first time, it's like, I have no idea. Is this how it's going to be the whole time? Like I'm going to lose it. So I ended up calling a local birth center where I had several friends that delivered. Um, I had heard great things about the midwives. I knew about midwives because your mom was in midwifery for so long. Yes. And she was even privy to a couple of birth classes by accident yes. <laughs> from my mom's yeah. back growing up. So. Totally. So it, was, it wasn't anything like totally off the cuff or abnormal for me. Like I, I knew that that would be it an option. Boy, it existed. It, it existed yeah. and yeah. people used it and it was, you know, fine to use midwives and all that. So I was like, I'm going to check out this birth center. It's highly recommended by people that I trusted. And we went in for our first appointment, my husband and I, I think it was maybe like 12 weeks or something, 12 or 14 weeks. And we were in there for like an hour and a half. She was so wonderful. She asked us all of these questions. She gave us time to think about things and ask questions back. So we left feeling really educated, heard, like heard, cared about. And I was like, hands down, this is where I want to get my, my prenatal care. 
Um, and then the thought of delivering in a hospital, I don't like hospitals in general. I get uncomfortable. They stress me out. I know for some people, maybe they, it makes them feel better. But for me personally, like, I don't want to be fussed over yeah. <laughs> in labor. Just leave me alone. Yeah, let um, it happen. Let it happen. Like, <laughs> well, when, I feel, when I knew, like at that point, I didn't know what it was like to be in labor. But I did know when I don't feel good or if I'm stressed out, I don't want to be bothered. If I need something, I'll ask. But I don't want to be just fussed over and checked on. And that drives me nuts. So I was like, I think this will be a good fit. And it really was. So my first labor and delivery, I, let's see, I had slow progression, like had you know, minor contractions or whatever for probably like 24 hours. And then it like hit me, like boom. Um, and you were at home when this happened. I was at home yeah. when this happened. Thankfully my husband was home. I had found a doula who was wonderful and called her. She came over. She's like, you're kind of, you're getting there not quite like she's like I'll stay in the area but I won't stay I want you guys to like take a nap kind of relax and it was like 9 p.m. I was watching the office bouncing on my medicine ball and it was just like boom I was like that is a contraction there's yeah that's a transition like, that, or that, yeah, all yeah, a different, like, like, different phrase that is <laughs> what they talk about because it, it, it was like like the little minuscule like the little like period cramp kind of yeah thing. yeah What's the fuss about? <laughs> These are <laughs> easy. Yeah, and then it like then it hits you and you're like, son of a. Mm. So <laughs> I did that for it was like six hours up until that point, which for a first birth I think was still relatively quick. Um, yeah, I mean overall, yeah. Overall, I mean it felt fast at that point, and so got to the birth center and he was born within a couple hours. Um, very easy birth. Um, like so, uh, so for anyone watching that or listening that doesn't like know anything about birth center births, mm -hmm. what were the like? There's no, pain, I mean, there are pain op options for pain relief. Yes. But so, what was your did did you what did your birth birth center offer, if anything, and did you at have the anything? Time, so at the time for like if you had back labor, like if your baby was posterior, they would do the. Um, the water. Sterile water. Sterile, sterile water. Sterile injection. water papules, I think yes. they call it. Yeah, yeah they just double injection. So they injection. did have that, but I, I mean, he wasn't posterior, so, so didn't need that I didn't. Again. So that was, at the time, the only um, option they had for pain relief. Okay. Um, and so, so I didn't need any of that. Um, I did go in the tub, and that was wonderful. Because the suite where we were, and I guess most birth centers would be this way, had a bed, a big water, like bathtub, bathroom. And so they filled the tub with like nice warm water, and that felt great. Once I got in there, I was like, "Oh, thank I'm leaving." Yeah, <laughs> I'm staying here. So everybody um, said, "Yeah, I've definitely uh, always told people like hot, like a bath mm -hmm. or running water in a shower." And like birth centers yeah. are nice because some of the birth centers have like that continuous hot water, where like in a, mm -hmm. in a house in a home birth, you might you're gonna run out of hot water. Right. If you have like an older water heater, if you don't have the yeah. What's the new kind they have? The, oh, the continuous Yeah, the water. tankless water. Tankless water. Yeah, tankless yeah. water. If you don't have one of those, you know, your hot water will run out eventually. But I mean, I think I spent upwards of 10 hours at, it was a long birth, my second birth, um, in just the kind of standing and just letting the water run over my back. So yeah. hot water, hot shower water. So warm water. Yep. I mean, that's definitely a pain relief option right there. Did you have your combs yet or no? At that point, I didn't have <laughs> okay. combs, but I did have my husband and my doula doing counter pressure. Oh, so yeah. he was doing counter pressure on my lower back. She was rubbing my shoulders. And so that was very helpful to have the massage and the hot water. I mean, that really did the trick for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously you're still feeling pain, but that definitely helped to make it um, manageable. Yeah, absolutely. You know, without needing anything else. So he came and wonderful I ended up I did have a postpartum bleed with him um, and so I stayed just a little bit longer at the birth center afterwards for postpartum care and then we went home and it was great and so that for my second one we chose to go to the same birth center had the same jewel it was almost identical actually as far <laughs> as like when we got there it was just half the amount of time so I had same um, minis like minimal contractions knew I was in labor but it was like, okay, I'm early labor. And then they stopped. So I was like, what's well, weird? They stopped for about 12 hours. And. Oh, I remember that actually. Yeah. <laughs> and so my husband was like, well, yeah. like we were, we were trying to figure out, like, well, am I in labor? Or is this just like, just the beginning and maybe in a few days it'll happen? We, like, we didn't really know. So we were just kind of playing it by ear. Um, 
But I ended up going to sleep that night, falling fast asleep. I was like, okay, maybe I'm not in labor. That's fine. And I woke up out of a dead sleep at like 1.45 in the morning. I was like, I wonder if a contraction woke me up. And like 15 minutes later, another like big one. I was like, well, this is it. I know this now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was much faster. I mean, it was within three hours he was born. So we made it to the birth center. And I was pushing, walking through the door. Ooh. I was already fully <laughs> yeah. dilated. It was uh. fast, and I knew it too. I was within my like my fifth or sixth contraction. I was like, I'm gonna get to no. know. <laughs> it still was not like <laughs> at, almost. But sick. everyone made it though. Like the everyone midwife. made it. The doula okay. met us there. The midwife um, back in the tub. I was like, as soon as we got there, I was like, get me in that tub. <laughs> so both my first, my first two were water bursts because. That was the only thing that gave me any kind of pain relief was being in the hot water and then the counter pressure. Yeah. So, um, overall, my second born's labor was like three hours. If you count early labor, it would have been like 27 or something If you like count that. labor and then there was a big stop. But then there was the stop for yeah. like, that was like 12 to 15 hours or something. I yeah. didn't have anything. So it was, it was fast. So then when I got pregnant with my third, my midwives were like, have you considered a home birth? So between your second and third, uh, labors slash pregnancies. What were the, the biggest differences besides, hey, the second one went way quicker? <laughs> uh, as far as like learning, I know everyone can yeah. kind of learn a lot of stuff just by having that first. Mm -hmm. So you have the experience of just being, having been in labor before and mm -hmm. now you're having, you know what you're headed towards. Yeah. But was there any other like big sort of like changes in your mind or your thought process about it now that you've been through it? Mm -hmm. I would say I was less I, less stressed. Not that I was like super stressed with my first one, but when it's like the first of every, like it's the first time, right? So every new experience, like in your trimester, like new trimester or whatever, it it was just a little bit more scary because it was unknown with my first one. Yeah. Whereas with my second, it's like, oh, okay, like I know this is fairly normal going into second trimester. You know, like if if you, I never was nauseous. Um, but I definitely had some insomnia. Um, with, or as with my first, I was like, am I just stressed? Well, no, it's part of pregnancy. You can get pregnancy insomnia. Yeah, you can. So <clears throat> um, I was way more uncomfortable physically, and that was mainly because my second was a bigger baby. Okay. I had like two pounds, just overall. He was a much bigger baby throughout the pregnancy. And you're, I was more tired because I had a toddler to take care of. But I would say um, emotionally, I was much more just like chill second time around mainly because I, I I knew in general what to expect I'll, you know just you've gone through the, the I'd basics. gone through the basic yeah. process of you know birth 101 <laughs> yeah birth 101 <laughs> and I was like okay this isn't as intimidating I guess, yeah okay. it's, not, it's not intimidating because I, I know what to expect in general right things can always happen but it was, in general I knew what to expect um I would say, like physically, I had much drier skin. I gained way more weight with my second, which I didn't know why. <laughs> Could I have that like, something to do with the Hashimoto? Maybe, maybe it did. I mean, I felt like my with my second, I could not get full. Like I could, I was always starving. I don't like even I would eat a full meal and I'm like I'm still so hungry. Yeah. Whereas my first, I didn't feel that way. Yeah. I would eat and I'm like I feel great and I'd be on my way. But with my <laughs> second. Like literally would eat and I'm like I, an hour later I'm like I could eat another meal I I could just I could not get to a point of feeling satisfied. That's almost like breastfeeding hunger. Yes. Yeah, because I feel like pregnancy yeah. hunger for me was like how you describe it with your first one. Like you would eat, you feel okay, you full enough. Yep. Breastfeeding, I felt like I could never get full. I would yeah, eat. Yeah. I ate eight tacos one time. Mm -hmm, I remember I that. I texted her and I was like, I'm scared. I just ate eight tacos and I want more. Yeah. And I was like, what? You know? <laughs> Am I gonna That's make how it? I felt with my but I was just breastfeeding for the pregnancy. So you had that during pregnancy. Yes, and I, was interesting. I yeah. attributed it to okay, well maybe it's because I'm chasing a toddler around at the same time yeah. and I'm growing a baby. Maybe I, my body's just like, you need more food. It's I I indulged. Not like with terrible food, but I definitely would like eat. And well, so he yeah. was a much bigger baby. I'm not horribly huge, but for me, it was big. He was an eight and a half pounds. My oldest was under seven. He was six something. Okay, yeah. And so, and so I'm like, so I I got bigger and the baby was bigger my second time around. <laughs> I, I don't know how to explain it, but it was just like I was so hungry the entire time. Um, 
So I would say those, that's probably the two main differences between two biggest things. Yeah, yeah. between the you know the two my first two. So then you get pregnant with third. Get pregnant with third. You cure well. You, you know I, your I'm Hashimoto's. Aware of Hashimoto's. Yeah, aware of it. Yep. And so I made sure I had a pretty clean diet for the most part. Um, and it was I was a lot more exhausted though because I had two kids. I had two challenges. Yeah. I had like what were the ages at the time? Four, <laughs> four and a half, and two. Yeah, that was a lot. And my second board gives us a run for our money, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, second so, board. So, so then, yeah, it's... I was much more exhausted. Um, but, again, I knew what to expect. With with my third, though, I had gone so fast with, with my first, and especially with my second, that my midwives were like, have you ever considered a home birth? Because you almost didn't make it, and you're gonna have a car baby if you. <laughs> and so they and they were a birth center that also did. They were birth home birth who midwives. also did okay. home births. Yeah. So there are some birth centers that don't have home birth midwives. Yeah. So, Mine was one of them in Delaware. Okay. So, yeah. 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 So they were they were the ones that kind of put the bug in my ear, and actually when I was pregnant with my second, they kind of put the bug in my ear, like you know we do home births. I was like no. It's, it's well, by then I had already had a home birth, so she had at least two bugs in her ear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I was, it was, if you saw me do it, you're like, I can do it, right? Yeah. She can do it. You know? But I, I was like, no, I, I really liked my birth center experience. I think I just want to well, yeah, continue another, that yeah, with and my second. And that's a good reason to, like, yeah. if you have a good experience in some place, like, it's like then you kind of feel like that's part of your story and part of how you're going to, if you right. give birth this way one time, you're probably just going to give birth the same right. way the next time just because it's a yeah. part of that experience. Yep. Um, yeah. It's usually when people have a really on average, I would say you should, if someone has a bad experience, that's when they They switch, want to deviate, they want to go, go move to a different, different, yeah, try yeah. something different. But you had good experiences and you were also able to keep, yes. probably the same doula, or no? Yeah, I had the same doula so same for, for your second. third? Well, what about for your third? Not for my third. Not for your third, okay. No. But you were able to keep like at least the same practice, Yeah. Mm -hmm. which you already know you like, you're comfortable with them. Yep, so. I already knew the okay. midwives, and so I trusted them. They knew my medical history with my first two births, and so for them to say, "Have you considered this?" I felt comfortable even more. Like, okay, if they're if they're saying, "Hey, this might be a good option for you," because you, I went fast with the first two, especially my second. When we found out we were pregnant with our third, I was like, "Yeah, I think I'm ready to talk about home birth." I was like, "Is it too early to talk about it?" it was like, I was like, "It was my first trimester, one of my first trimester." <laughs> hey, start prepping early. early, and they're like, "No, I'm so excited for this," and so. I, and with that, we were all able to like mentally prepare that we were going to do a home birth, so the midwives were all aware we were planning for it. So I had time to like gather the things that I needed to and just kind of mentally picture like, okay, where would I want to have the baby in our home and, you know, where would our older two go? Are they going to go? Are they going to stay? You know, yeah. we had plenty of time, you know, deciding early on that we wanted to do a home figure birth that all to out. figure all that out. And so... Um, so did you end up having the kids there, or no. did you send them away? We okay. ended up sending them away. I, 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 as we got a little closer, I was like, you know, I don't know. They're gonna, they're not gonna chill. It's not gonna be chill. I know. It's one of those things you have to, like, kind of mentally. Yeah. You, you don't. You won't know until they're there. It's true, and I will say, like, in times when I've been sick, they were very sweet, very attentive. Um, they it's love like, their mama. Yes, but it's like, do you want them there right. touching you? Especially since you were the kind of person, like, I'm maybe like, you I don't want to be touch. I yeah. would love to them, <laughs> yeah. you know? And so I just, like, I think it'd be, like, overall better for me to mentally be like, okay, now I can just relax. Because I knew if I'd be, if they were there, I would still be mom. I'd still be, like, taking, even yes. if I had somebody yeah. designated specifically for them, I knew myself enough to say, like, no, I'd still be mom. I'd, like, they'd still come to me first. Yes. And I would, you know, out of habit, and, like, they're my kids, but sure, I'm going to take care of this for you. And I knew I wouldn't be able to fully relax, and so we made the decision that they would go with grandparents. And so they went, so my, with my third, it was different because my water broke. So with oh, my ahead other of time. two, Yeah, yes. okay. so my other two broke while I was pushing, but with my third, it broke ahead of time. And I'm like, oh, this is different. I, did, I thought I peed myself. I didn't know. I do remember that now. Yeah, I, I called forgot. you because I'm like, I don't know if I peed Did my water or break? Or water <laughs> but I had a, a midwife appointment that morning. So it was like two hours later I had a midwife appointment because I talked to my, my midwife. I was like, so I think my water broke? She's like, oh my gosh, let's check. <laughs> She's like, yep, that's your water. And so 
she's like, within 24 hours, it could probably go into labor. I'm like, okay. And she was three weeks early. So I had just, I was like 37 weeks and two days or something at that point. Okay. And I was like, this is like, I'm not used to this. Like I went almost up until my due date with my first two. So it was overall a different experience from the beginning with my third. And so we got the kids off to grandparents, got the last minute things we needed. Cause I'm like, I got a few more weeks. Yeah. This yeah. <laughs> like, Although you had since your first trimester, but, right, <laughs> you but, I mean, but it was like something. some of the last minute yeah. things. Like yeah. I don't need to put the, like Food the special the bag bags. on the bed, like the waterproof oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. trash bag thing that goes on the bed, double make the bed the, the way you're supposed to. Um, I was still waiting on towels to be delivered. I had ordered an extra set of towels just specifically for the birth. I'm like, those aren't going to be here in time. I'm like, like, sorry, I'm so I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, they're like a week away. I'd order them from like Walmart or something like that. And so we had to like go out and get towels and food for the midwives. Yeah, so that's so, the first thing I thought. I was like, oh, if you were three weeks out, you would probably not have had anything prepared. Yeah. For yeah. even yourselves either. Not even, yeah, I had, I had that morning, actually, it was really funny because my water broke at like 6.30 in the morning. And that morning, I had two family members message me like, "Hey, I'm starting to make your freezer meals. Like, what are you wanting?" And so like, my oh, sister-in-law, right <laughs> my sister-in-law was like, "Well, I think my water broke," <laughs> and she, I was like, "So you might be needing to make a meal for us." And so, um, so I confirmed my water broke, and and I was going to the store to grab something, talking to my sister-in-law. She said, "Why are you going? Go home. Why are you going?" To the store? I was like, "I don't know what to do. I don't know." Think I'm in labor. I think it was but you weren't contracting. I wasn't though. contracting. Yeah, I just, so, yeah. And so um, I think you see Hollywood or any sort of you your know, water breaks your water immediately. Breaks. And yeah. for some people, that might be the case, but that yeah. wasn't it for me. So I was just yeah. like, it's just more yeah. of like a Within stage a day, effect. That's yeah. like water breaks. Ooh, contraction. Like right. immediately. Where so like your water broke, and then when did your contraction start? They didn't start until almost twelve hours later. Which so my midwife had said if they if they haven't started within twelve hours come back, we'll do a stress test to make sure you and baby are good, and then we'll figure out from there next steps. So it was like almost at 12 hours, um, I had gotten a, a contraction. So I made sure to let her know. She's like, okay, I'm on back, I'm on my way over. <laughs> um, she's like, cause she was there from, she attended my first birth. And so she goes, I know when you turn a corner and when your contractions start, you better tell me. Yeah, well, because, and she probably would have known the story with your second, yep. which was like, mm -hmm. bing, bing, boom as well, so, yep. yeah, yep. that's so smart, like, smart very, good very <laughs> smart. yeah, and had a great relationship with her, so she, um, so she came right over after we got the kids settled, and I've got, we finally got everything we needed, it was all those last minute things, and food, my sister-in-law brought us over dinner for her, for me, for Caleb, and then the, um, the midwife assistant, yes. and then our doula, I called our doula, but they had moved out of state, so she was wonderful. I love her a lot. Um, so I still like messaged her and sent her pictures of babies. Like, yeah. I'm so sad I gave yeah. you but, but you so you still had a duel with the second one. I, the third I one didn't. Though, didn't. No, but at I mean, that a point, midwife assistant is a midwife also... assistant. And at that point, it's like okay, this is my third. Um, I felt pretty good, pretty confident going into labor and like delivery again. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and Caleb as well. It's like he could, he could do the counter pressure, and so I felt comfortable with just those three. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so I, my contractions were pretty minimal once they started. I remember my midwife coming over and we just sat and visited and talked and ate dinner together and she knitted and it was like 10, about 9.30. No, it was about 9.30. She was, she was like, why don't we all take a nap? Like, let's just all sleep. So she went into <clears throat> one of the bedrooms to, to rest and my husband and I laid on the couch watching a movie and I fell asleep and I will never forget. I woke up because the baby had turned I felt I, I like felt her turn and drop and then there was like a pop and it was like the rest of my water went and it was immediately I was like oh I'm in labor I, I was <laughs> hitting my husband like get me down on the floor and I, so I needed to be on all fours like I just knew I needed to be on all fours I was like it's happening I took my ripping my socks off <laughs> well, it's funny too because you always like when you were talking about you plan like where are you thinking of like potentially planning where you mm -hmm. might have the baby in the house yeah. and then that happens and it's like I might have been couch and I was like I gotta get down the hall to get, my bedroom. Get off the I have a double made bed in the back. I got yeah, a birth pool I, out there. I got a shower and I got and now I'm on all floors in the living room. Uh, and my, you never my know what's gonna happen. He was, <laughs> he was dozing. He's thinking this is gonna be tomorrow at some point. It's gonna happen tomorrow. He was like it went from zero to a hundred and like that and he was like. What do I do? What do you want me to do? Like, get me to the bathroom. 
because I knew I needed to pee. <laughs> what, what, I feel like it always that pressure I'll makes that you pressure. feel like so, you have to pee. Yeah. And I thankfully like was able to go pee, like empty my bladder like they say you should, and then made it into the bedroom. The midwife assistant made it like at like my third contraction because we woke up the midwife and she's like, oh, I heard her. I heard you. I heard her. Uh, so she called the assistant. Start making those vocal sounds. Yep. Like, yeah. The yep. midwives know what that is. Yeah, <laughs> like, she knew the sound. And so the midwife assistant showed up in the door mid con in the middle of two contractions. I'm like, hi. <laughs> and, she, and it was, I think I, I honestly, I don't I only had like a handful of contractions and like first urge to push baby was out. So overall my labor was like 36 minutes. Which we, we don't talk about that. Which one. is, it's unreal. I, I, <laughs> I still love her, but like my God. <laughs> it's 84 years. It's been 84 you. years for me. I, push, I think I pushed for four and a half hours with my first one. Oh yeah. yeah. And then 30, you're like, 36 minutes. 36 and I was like, what? Like, but of course it's also like a third baby. It she was, was small. Baby. She was small. She was three weeks early. Yeah. And I intended to have fast labors anyway, for whatever reason. I, yeah. You know, but, um, didn't even make it to the bed. She was born on the floor at the foot of my bed. Isn't that funny? It's so funny. You can plan. And people, I mean, people with car births, no one is planning that. No one's that. planning it. No one is like, yeah. oh, it's time to go to the hospital, but I'd really rather have the baby in the car. <laughs> like, you know, no one's like, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, you can Just plan all you it. want. I feel like you never really yeah. you know where exactly you're going to give birth. But yeah. in your home, so d the differences between birth center and home for mm -hmm. you, what were the, the, main, the main things that stood out? I was way more relaxed. I felt pretty relaxed at a birth at the birth center, um, but I didn't realize how relaxed I would feel at home. Like I was just like I'm in my own space. Yeah. And for sure. Um, and it, it, I mean, it, overall, it was quick in general. But it was like, oh, this. I felt I'm like, did I even like, did I even have labor? Like it was weird. It was bizarre because you you know you come out of having a baby, and it's almost like you look back and the memory is almost dreamlike because you're like, you know, you're you're adrenaline kicks in, your endorphins kick in, you get that oxytocin flush oh, comes when you like have your baby. A love cocktail. A love I think cocktail, yeah. right? So it's like it's like this dreamy state when you think about like what just happened, you know? And um, so because hers was so quick, I remember being like, did I even have a baby? Like this is weird. And I never left my house. Yeah. Right? Exactly. That was yeah. the other thing is like I never left my house where it's like you can separate like yes, I went to this place. I had a baby. I brought the baby home. So at home it was just like, okay, I wait, had the baby. It's still. I had the baby. I'm still here. I'm still here. Now the baby's here. here. Yeah. <laughs> it's very weird. Where did the baby come from? I was able to be in my own bed and. Um, well, because at a birth center birth too, in case anyone doesn't know, like you are usually home within four to six hours yeah, after home. the baby. So yeah. you're still in your bed that night. You're There's still no, in your bed that night. You're not hooked up to monitors. Right. And, and mm -hmm. I mean, there is still some checking you do at home mm -hmm. with the baby and yourself, but it's not like yeah. nurses coming in every 10 minutes and other people, exactly. other babies crying, you know, so it is, like, you yeah. still are home after a birth center birth. Yeah. Within a few hours. A, but yeah. At a birth center birth, you know, you're put into oh, sorry, bed. I said birth center birth. Or what did I say? I said home birth. <laughs> I meant like yeah. at a birth center birth. At a birth you're birth, still home too. You're still home too. No, but, you did say that. Okay, okay. No, you so didn't say that. But, but home birth, you're, you home never leave. Birth, you never leave. Yeah. Different and place. I would say the, like I, the birth center, you know, you're you have they have a bed, and it's very cozy. It's like a nice hotel oh, spa yeah. situation. You know, so you're still it's a still a very like warm environment. Um, but I was like, oh, this is different. Being in my own my own bed postpartum, like you're immediately put into your own bed. You got all the familiar smells and surroundings around yeah. you that is like, I don't have to, I don't, I'm not thinking about as soon as I'm done being checked out and everything is good, we're getting in a car. Putting her in the car to going, home. going, yeah. Yeah, and it was like, oh, we're staying here? This is nice. And that, I would say for my husband, that was the most stressful thing for him was once we left the birth center <sighs> with the first two, the drive home, even though it was like five minutes, having this, he's like this new precious little life that I'm now responsible for and my wife postpartum he's like that drive home is so stressful because like, <laughs> you have your precious cargo anyway right but it's like they're there now and you're way more aware of being on the road with people and other drivers and you're just like it's stressful it was stressful for him so he's like I didn't have to worry about that <laughs> like, yeah. we were already home so yeah. she didn't get in the car for the first time until she was like five days old for her like newborn checkup yeah like, was part of and because the first did the they come first, back to check yeah, yeah most, they came to me most home birth midwives will come yes. back do at least a 24-hour check yep. on the mom and baby mm -hmm. and like do the pku yep 
and I think that and I mean it was it. That's yeah. usually it. I mean that. Yep. Yeah. So the first that first one I, they came to me, and then it was the I think the second one it was like the four or five days we went. Where in. you go to like a, usually a pediatrician, right? Well, we, we go to the too. Yeah, okay, back yeah. to them. Because sometimes if you have a pediatrician, I know people will. Yeah, find it. My pediatrician, it was like a, within two weeks. Okay. The midwives, at least at yeah, our birth weeks. center, it was the first two weeks that yes. we yeah. provide infant care. Yeah, it so, was two weeks with each one of my kids, too. I had to think mm-hmm. about that. We had it because we had a, um, a pediatrician by the time the second one came around. The yeah. first one, we didn't really have a pediatrician. We yeah. were like, I mean, we did because, I mean, that is something we recommend people do is, like, go try to find yeah. someone. But we were in, well, my story is different, but we were just in a different state. And so we yeah. came back to my state. We had like, we went to a guy, but we never met him. Mm-hmm. And we had someone that we knew we could go to. We didn't know if I was going to end up being our pediatrician. Right. You know? He ended up being our pediatrician because he was super awesome. But you don't know yeah. until you know. But you so the know. second one, I was trying to remember when we brought yeah. the baby in. But I, yeah, I mean, we really didn't have to, which is nice postpartum as a mom. Yeah. Getting in the car. Yeah. To and just stay home. Just stay home. Not have to worry about getting in the car. And, oh. Yeah. So it was overall, I loved it. I was like, oh, this is nice. Like, I loved my birth set of births, but then now having a home birth to compare, I'm like, oh, I would, I, I don't know if we'll have any more, but if we did, I would 100% choose a home birth again. And that harkens so back nice. to like all those years ago uh-huh. where neither of us had kids or anywhere near having kids. Really. Yeah. How, it would have been like 10 years, 10 years, 11 years before we had kids. Yeah. And yeah, that we just bought, I think it came out on Netflix. Yeah, we're like, oh, let's watch this. Or Prime. And it, because it was familiar to you, because you grew up with your mom being a midwifery. Yes. And then I I, I remember your yep. mom, like, teaching Lamaze classes, and we were running from school, and we are dropping our backpacks, and, you know, running out the door. Yeah. So it was, like, not an abnormal thing for us. Like, we were aware of it. I was curious. I remember being, like, when I was, like, documentaries anyway, but that was yeah. about like, subject matter. I was like, well, I... I'm, I know I don't have any kids, but I have a little bit of, not expertise yeah. per se, but I have a lot of knowledge mm-hmm. about this. And so I was curious to see what what the documentary, the documentary had and to say. And I was just along and for the ride. You were there. there. And I'm like, sure, I'll watch it. I'll watch it. And then, Sounds interesting. So yeah, it was crazy to see how, you know, how much mm-hmm. probably my mom with her story not just influenced me, but some of my friends. <laughs> so yep. generationally now, generationally and then we now. both have daughters, so it's like mm-hmm. we can influence them in that way. Like you don't have to be scared of birth. Yeah, you don't have to be. And you don't have to, you know, I think a lot of people now, I don't, I mean, I would say there's, I mean, it's not a huge shift because I think it's only like 2% yeah. of that home births. There's still, a, uh, there's a decent amount to do birth center births. Yeah. But it's like our generation, our generation, and you know, is like, psh, you get pregnant, it's like you have to go to the hospital. Yeah. And I'm like, for me, I was raised where like a hospital's where you go to die, not get yeah. born. So I was like on the back. Yeah. I was a complete opposite on that. I would but, say, I like what I'm seeing in, in our generation specifically. I, I am seeing a shift back to kind of more like like it's, we're being harkened back to the traditional way of life or like home birth. Yeah. Home school. Home. I guess. Yeah. Every. She also homeschools. Yeah. yeah. And um, but like with my mom's generation and I would say even like the generation above her because I think that's kind of when hospital births and going to the hospital for things became more popular became more yeah more popular so like you have yeah. a few generations of like oh no it's normal you just go to a hospital for just a go to the hospital now yeah but our generation is now looking back further and going but that wasn't norm like the norm was home birth it was only this very small and chunk if of you time. had high risk yeah. or whatever you go to a hospital which you still do today you know if you have more comp- more complications maybe you know and it's great that that's there yeah but um but just for everybody in general it's like well, no it's not an all like one size fits all like basic your, birth is not an emergency your, basic labor right. pregnancy it's not it's not a pathology thing. it's like a it's a it's a very normal biological function and i would say that was the big perspective shift for me when choosing when i was first pregnant with, or i was pregnant with my first um is Wait, it's not it's not a pathology. This has been happening to women for yeah. ever since the beginning of time. <laughs> since right? the beginning of time. Beginning of time. <laughs> um, and it, the pain that you feel, it's not because of an injury. It's a normal biological function. And to hear, it, I, I think it was like a midwife, or I might have even been in that documentary. I can't remember. Or your mom, somebody, somebody I knew was like, it's not pain from injury this is a nor- this is a pain that your body was made to go through and it, it was different it was painful yeah. but it wasn't like I'm gonna die from this pain yeah. you know whereas if you know you break your arm that's painful because it's not supposed to be broken 
Yeah. You know, whereas, ha giving, having a baby, your body's supposed to do that. So, I don't know. It's hard to explain, you know, until you're there. But, um, yeah. Yeah, so that was, that was a big, like, mind shift for me that helped me kind of be able to focus on, oh, yeah, this is going to be okay, doing birth center birth and home birth. Um, but, yeah, our generation, I think it's, you, you, you see both. Like, oh, you just go to the hospital and you do all the things that you're told to do. But I am seeing more people in our generation, as opposed to like our mom's generation, yeah. say, but wait, yeah, do I? I? <laughs> yeah, because if you think about it, well, first off, still over in like Europe, mm -hmm. it's almost like what 80 something percent in a lot of countries of births are, are attended by midwives yeah. at home. Mm -hmm. And it's just that's been how it's been completely normal for them to do that yeah. since the beginning of time, but, yeah. Of time. Yeah. but just forever. <clears throat> and. It was really on America when we sort of, it was like the AMA, American Medical Association, was yeah. created and kind of just went from there. Yep. And you, you did you did see, like, my grandmother was born at home. Mm -hmm. Obviously, all people before that were born at home as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my grandmother, when she had her kids, it was the 60s, and she had them all in the hospital. And they all had problems that were like new problems for babies mm -hmm. to have. And also she was given ether, you know. Right. <laughs> like, you know, it's a little for, different. You know, I think at least for her first two it was ether, but yeah. um that was something that hadn't been done before. So it's like now that we have and of course our our parents generation, you know, giving birth in the in the eighties, and you see so you basically have two generations our generation can look back on, yeah. on and see, okay, well, you know, when they gave thalidomide to the, those women over in England right. and they were like, babies babies were born without limbs, then they're like, mm -hmm. oh, it was the thalidomide and they stopped. And then it was like, oh, well, we're giving mothers ether during pregnancy right. and now these, you know, big eye problems and other problems are happening, respiratory issues, mm -hmm. whatever it is. So we had these like two generations, I feel like. Yeah, to look back to on. To look back and see, well, we hadn't done these things before yeah. and those problems didn't exist. Yeah, you started you started involving, uh, well, just the American medical establishment and mm -hmm. um, American pharmaceutical companies or any pharmaceutical company into like, well, we're gonna fix morning sickness. Well, morning sickness is, like you said, it's not an injury. You know, it's part of a. a it's uncomfortable for some people. Great. It can be really, <laughs> really you know, bad. You have hyperemesis. Right. Yeah. I and, mean, it's, and so I have friends who had to be hospitalized because of that because they were yes. so dehydrated and they had major complications. And it's like. I'm so grateful that we have the medical care for those things. When you need it, yeah, Right, absolutely. because that would be a complication. And But if you're low risk, overall low, low yeah, low risk, um, what's the word I'm looking for? In general, overall healthy. Yes. You know, there's, there's no reason to have to do all those things. And to treat birth and labor right. and pregnancy like a disease and it's not. it's not yeah yeah but when then, things what rise up the mom, you right know, what are you what, you're a disease now you know like yeah. what that mentality is like well you can't then it's almost like belittling almost how you felt in the hospital like yeah the little kind of just a number i'm hurt it in i heard it in you said like, you were like gonna, I, oh it's this bye oh, you know and it's like yeah uh, like it's like cattle being herded off into the right. hospital give birth they take the baby yeah. from you you know mm -hmm. just like they take the baby cow away from the mom i mean literally i mean that's actually i never thought of that about yeah. that it is it's kind of like herd you off into the hospital and take your baby and do whatever they want to and right you know it's, yeah and i remember with somebody even though this is very trivial i had a friend who's like i don't want you to wash my baby i want them to like once they're born i don't want you to like take whatever immediately soap, give them a bath <laughs> scrub them down and they the nurses started doing it and they weren't paying attention and like someone, it was just part of their routine, mm -hmm. and they started doing it. And the dad was like, "No, no, no, no!" And tried to get the baby, and they wouldn't give the baby to the dad. Yeah. And I was like, "Stop, stop, yeah. stop!" It, she, she had a, she was, and it's just that little bit of trauma. Yeah. Because you have you lose that little bit of control. It's not that wasn't a big issue, obviously, but it was enough of an issue where she felt right. a little bit of trauma from that because that's her baby. Why does she that's not have her control? Baby. She should have the control over it. Over right? even something as trivial as a bath. Don't give them a bath just yet. <laughs> and then they go, okay, well, we forgot and we're just giving them. Yeah, well, because they have their routines. Anyway, they they have routines, routines, routines exactly. their habits, you know. So, so there's, there's a lot of like. It's a disconnect um, between yeah, there's a lot mothers of, and. It seems like our, our generation <laughs> has a lot of cycles that are being broken. Like whether yeah. it's like yeah. in healthcare, um, like even in how we talk to our kids or spouses like we're and that's what I mean like I'm seeing so much more of a pull to back to just the traditional like okay like let's just go back to what's baseline you know and just do things as um, least invasive as possible yeah. and then when things rise up you know you can make the choices that you need to make you know if you're 
high risk or whatever, but if you're low risk, why, why go to a hospital, you know, unless you're scared, you know? And for some and, moms, and why are we lot. scared? Let's they're talk they're, about yeah. why we're scared. Why are we scared? What, were we, yeah. what was pumped into our hearts and our minds growing yeah. up to make us think that this is a bad thing and you have to be in a hospital for it, you know? Because overall, like, you're, you know in general if you have, if they're, you know, you're going to have issues. Like, your constant blood tests, constant monitoring. Yeah. Your midwife is going to say, like, I had friends who were like, oh, you know, your, your levels for X, Y, and Z are high you're considered a little more high risk now, and so we're gonna transfer your care to over here, right? Where you're gonna deliver in the hospital. And they had fine experiences, and they just had more closely, close monitoring or whatever. Yeah. But it's- but It's the informing of it's it. It's the you informing. Need to be Once you're of informed and you what's have- What's really it. going on. <laughs> yeah, and then you're empowered to make the right choice for to your keep, kid, yeah. whether, for you and your family, whether it's having a baby at home or having a baby at a hospital. Yeah. Um, so there's just, I feel like our generation is becoming more informed, whereas previous, it's, you just do what you're told. Well, and I think, so yeah. part of, I think part of being informed these days, and why, maybe why we're so more informed is mm-hmm. stuff just like this. You can hear, well, first off, you can hear the kids. That's yes. the kids. Don't, no worries. Those are just yeah. kids who are playing. Very <laughs> <They're laughs> so loud. They're getting a little rambunctious. Loud, so it's almost no dinner time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they, um, this kind of a thing, social media. Mm-hmm. The, you know, uh, you know. Obviously, our parents didn't have the kind of access to internet that we have, so there's like mm-hmm. we have open information. We yeah. can get library books on our phones. We have audio books, so we don't yeah. just sit and read anymore. Yeah, we can watch pot or watch YouTube videos, listen to podcasts. Yep. It, it's just it, there's just so much. And my mom, I remember saying one time, she's like, "You all don't know how easy you have it." <laughs> she was right. like, I had to like hear at a, co- a birth conference that I attended of a book. Or maybe it was being, you know, at a table yeah. or at that conference. Go buy the book and then read the book, yeah. <laughs> you know, with three kids in tow or however many kids. Yeah. And she was like, or, or hear of it, word of mouth, go to a library, check it out. Yeah. And, you know, she's like, this is a lot different what you guys have. You're, so, I mean. Yeah, really, as far as, like, material information, it's like we have so much more at our fingertips. Yeah, absolutely. And I would also say another difference that I've noticed um, so like my grandma, you can tell me if this happened with your grandma. Okay. When it came to like pregnancy and birth in society, you just didn't talk about it. Oh, absolutely. It was very, it was not <laughs> the proper thing to do. Yeah. If like, it was very like, you kind of hide that you're pregnant, you go to a hospital, you bring home a baby, oh, there's a baby, mm-hmm. and then you don't talk about it. You don't yeah. talk about the struggles afterwards, you don't talk about any kind of postpartum issues that you might have, whether it's depression or anxiety or whatever. Or incontinence. Or incontinence. <laughs> <laughs> All the things. Yeah. You don't, you just, like, it was, you don't talk about it. Whereas, again, another difference, like, other than the material information that we have at our fingertips that we could read, you have a group, like, a generation now that is so much more open and vulnerable about what they experienced yeah. that you can glean and learn a lot from and find support in. So there's, there's empowerment, not just, like, in education, like, educationally being informed about Here's how your body works, and but socially, but socially yeah. and also emotionally, interpersonally, there's a lot more support. That it's like, okay, none of this has to be scary anymore because now I know, like, I know how my body works, you know, and now I also am learning, like, emotionally and cognitively how things are working. Right. Yeah. So there's none of it has to be scary. You don't have to be alone in all of it. Whereas, Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, yeah. previous generations like our grandmothers, you don't talk about it. It's all down here. I will say, and I don't know if you know the story, my grandmother didn't know what the word pregnant was. She had never heard I the word pregnant. I don't remember that story. She didn't know what it meant. She heard the word pregnant at age 14. Hmm. Never didn't know what it was. And if you even think about it, I mean, one of our favorite shows growing up, I mean, even to this day, is I Love Lucy. Yeah. And when she gets pregnant, if you actually pay attention to the show, they, they never say pregnant. They can't say. Expecting. Say, yeah, it's expecting. expecting. You cannot say. Or is it with child or something? With child. Whatever. Or it was some yeah. of those. It was one of those where you can't, mm-hmm. like, they didn't say pregnant again. Don't talk about it. But at that point, if you think about it, so my grandmother would have been in, like, the mid 50s, would have been coming out of teenagerhood into her 20s, but it's like, mm-hmm. that's why. I mean, like, you couldn't see, you know, you wouldn't yeah. have heard it on television. It was almost like a shameful thing. It's so Which is so weird. How do they get pregnant in separate beds? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, right? I'm not even happened, first Whereas off. Whereas now, like, I guess, like, there's just so much more openness and vulnerability around it yeah. that there's, I don't know, there's almost like, the, there's less fear, I guess. Yeah, when I, well, you know? yeah you're not afraid and. Yeah, of I would say the people that I know that gave birth 
either in a birth center or at home, um, or chose to do that, and then even if there's complications that they had to give birth in hospital, they there was, in general they had less fear about being pregnant, having a baby, yeah. um, and you know the things that would come postpartum because there was just this in general more information and just more support. You, you could be vulnerable and talk about it, and it wasn't a taboo thing. And that's basically what we're doing here. <laughs> <laughs> And we always were in that, I mean, we've been in that generation this whole time, but we, even when we were younger, when we were teenagers, not just because my mom did what she did, um, but I think just because that's how our generation mm -hmm. grew up. We were just, we had more, tele we didn't have just three television channels and, you know, you could only see a movie in the theaters, you know, you, we had yeah. movies brought home, we could have a movie collection at home and the CD collection at home and mm -hmm. all that, I mean, I guess I had records, but yeah. I don't know, overall I just think there was just, because of how we grew up, we always weren't afraid to ask each other. Yeah. I mean, or our mothers. Yeah. Questions. And I don't know if that's just, we were blessed enough to have mothers who were like, hey, you can be open with me if you need to be about right. these things. And they were very open about their experience. Well, exactly. I think, and yeah. I don't know if that's where that shift was because I feel like, oh, my mom was very like, if you have a question about anything or mm -hmm. if your friends have a question about anything, come to me, like, please come to me. Yeah. And I think one of the things that she mentioned once was like, because I'd rather you get information from me, someone who's been through it, who knows about things, than like one of your peers or like from a wrong source of information, you know? Yeah. Um, so we were, I, I, me and my sister as siblings, but also you, we were like, if you had a question, I remember multiple times, you'd be like, can you ask your mom? Or like, hey, I talked to your yeah. mom. Yeah. Um, but I think, or you talked, your mom was also, same yep. thing. If, and I think, I'm just guessing, this is just theory, that the that because their parents didn't have, they didn't have that relationship with their parents. Their parents never talked about it. They didn't talk about it. I remember my mom yeah, saying, because my mom never talked, I, I don't even think my grandmother told her about her cycle that would come eventually. Yeah. So she's like, I'm dying, you know, and you, don't know happened, what, yeah. you just didn't talk about it. So because of that, no talk, no communication, so, it's like yeah. they went, our parents went super. Everyone was so uncomfortable like, about flip, it. Flop, like, yep. we're going to have our kids, they can talk to us about anything. Yeah. So are we going to be even worse with our kids? Like you can talk about something about really anything. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, it, I do like that. That is an open yes. source of mm -hmm. communication with the parent. Whereas like they didn't have that with their yeah. parents. And like, I just, you know, my grandma too, one time was like, yeah, my mom never told me anything. Yeah. You know, I even have a friend who's in our generation whose mom never told her anything about like period, cycle, sex, etc., pregnancy, mm -hmm. labor. And, and when she got so it, fear behind it. She gave her. She's like, mom. And she came to her mom with, when she got her first period, and, and her mom was like, oh, and was like, went into the bathroom and gave her a box of tampons or pads or something, and that was it. That was the. There was no yeah, conversation. Yeah. And I was like, what? And so then she said, she, what did she do? You go to the next. Your friends, you know, to ask questions. Now your friends might know as well. Some of them may not have mm -hmm. had their periods, but they might know what it is. Like if someone had come to me, I would have known what to say. Oh, well, this is what it is. You know. Mm -hmm. But I felt bad for her because she was in our generation. Yeah. She is in our generation. Oh my gosh. And I was like, is the cycle still going? You know? <laughs> like, I mean, I'm sure with some people it is. But for some people, yeah. But I hopefully, think in general, it's starting to break. Where hopefully it's, like, it's breaking let's down. Let's talk more about it and it's not going to be so scary or overwhelming. And more there's open, more support yeah. and there's going to be, it's going to be okay no matter what. Yeah. And you don't need to be afraid of birth, you know. And even like breastfeeding, like you breastfed all, mm -hmm. you're still breastfeeding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you breastfed your three children, I breastfed my two. Mm -hmm. And looking back even into the 90s, I have an aunt who gave birth in the early 90s. I mean, and it was just like, it was not the thing you did. You did not breastfeed. Yeah. You were, you gave formula. It was like uncool to breastfeed. And I was yeah. like, how did they work that out? Like, how did they market yeah. that? Sort of how they marketed cigarettes as cool back in the day. Right. They literally marketed formula as the thing to do. Like, it's way better than breast milk. Mm -hmm. And so you just didn't do it. And what was funny is when she uh, later had two kids in the 2000s, by this time she's met my mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my mom made, you know, let's just, you can breastfeed. You, you should breastfeed. She's um, encouraged. She's in, she informs you and she encourages you. Like, yeah. And just, like, you, yeah. Can, you can do it. So that's the other thing is, you know, watching people. I mean, she, my aunt would have, you know, would be... 20 years older than me, but so she's mm -hmm. not quite our parents' generation. Right. Um, our parents were a little older when they had us, but yeah, anyway, mm -hmm. just kind of interesting, like. It's interesting, just the different societal, generations. The, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the generational perspectives, the society, how it was treated, and then overall, just at, information wise, having so much more at our fingertips. There's so okay. many things at play there. Um, 
And I wonder, I'm, so interesting. I'm curious what the next, is it Gen Z's next? Yeah. And then there's Zoomers? Or is that Zoomers or Gen Z? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not down with <laughs> the kids these days. I don't know. I don't know if Z is for Zoomers, and I've missed that, but either way, I, don't know. I think Gen Z's behind us now. Yeah. And I'm curious, like, what Gen Z is going to do with, because they were raised, obviously, by different parents than us. Yeah. So a different generation of parents than us. So I'm, mm -hmm. well, I'm curious what that generation of parents did to these poor kids. <laughs> I mean, it's not looking good. Sorry, Gen Z. No. Um, no, I, I'm curious because I'm yeah. really Gen Z started really have hit their baby boom at all. Like we're yeah. we're at the end of our chill, like our child bear. Not end for you know we could still yeah. have kids if we wanted to, but we're just well we're getting older. <laughs> we're we're, pu we're pushing forty. We're yeah. not looking for any more. We're kids. not we're not the Gen Zers. We're not Gen Z, so we're not you know maybe they I don't know what day or what decade they are or whatever age they are, but like twenties. Are they in their twenties? Yeah. So maybe they're just starting. Just starting. So have kids. it's gonna be interesting to see what statistics show in a little mm -hmm. bit. Are they are they like running to the hospital? Are they running to birth centers, hospitals? Are they breastfeeding? Right. You know what are they doing? Are mm -hmm. they completely on, um, you know, like, um, not wanting family, not home. all, who knows? Well, yeah, not, yeah, not wanting yeah. to even get married and have kids. I don't know, because like, even millennials for a while, we're millennials, and they were like, millennials aren't having enough children to repopulate yeah. the planet. We're like, oops. We all, we all went and got jobs and had the careers, and yeah. then we're like, wait, but we do want to be home and have families. Yeah. We're kind of, we're kind of shifting back to, like I said, that traditional way of life. I know a few people that are like, they bought a homestead, if you want to call it that. That means yeah, just a same. bunch of land, and they've. Same. I mean, they're not quite like Amish yet, but they're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> and I would. I mean, that doesn't sound like a bad idea, actually. These and days. You really. Yeah. Goodness. I'm all about home right now. Home birth, home school, home birth, home home homemade from like homemade, you know. Homemade food. Made from yeah. yeah. Made from scratch food. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But it's just interesting. So thanks for watching today, guys, or listening, whatever you did. And let us know below in the comments if you guys have had hospital, home birth, birth center experiences that you want to share. If you have any questions about Hashimoto's, breastfeeding, natural birth, whatever, let us know. Mm -hmm. And also, if you're a Gen Z and you've had a baby, let me know what you did because I'm very curious as to what your generation is doing. <laughs> I Now I need to like go Google this. Um, but thanks for watching, guys, and join us uh, soon for more naturally minded and holistic content. Bye.